Peace be with you. A warm welcome in our Savior's name to all worshiping, either in person or later online, through the service of the Word this January the 8th. Today we leave behind the season of Christmas and begin the time after Epiphany, as we renewed by the good news of the baptism of Jesus. And after this service, our Christmas decorations in the sanctuary and through the church will be put away until next December. Fellowship Hour also resumes today following worship in Emmanuel Hall. And the platform lift is available for those who can't access the basement via the stairs. Please sign up on the sheet in the front hall to help with setup or cleanup and baking. And the sheet is also there to sign up for being a worship assistant on the remaining Sundays in January. The January edition of our congregation's newsletter is now available. And copies are in the front hall if you didn't receive an e-copy. It's also available on our website. <coughs> We're happy to be resuming in-person children's ministry. We're meeting monthly with the next time being next Sunday, January the 15th. We begin downstairs in Emmanuel Hall and then come upstairs to share Holy Communion. A reminder to council members that your meeting this month is delayed one week to the Tuesday, January 17th. This enables year-end tasks to be more complete. Our National Church's daily devotional booklets for January to March are available in the front hall and can also be dropped off. I've written the devotions for January 22nd to 28th, and the former pastor of our Saviors, the Reverend Dr. Dennis Lewick, has done so for the end of February. Gifts received in the basket in the front hall in January will be given to the Kern River Church's food bank. The food from December is being used this month by the Gathering Tables food bank. Thank you to Darlene for filling in as position today while Vi recovers from the illness. And thank you also to Peter for being reader. And thank you for John for helping to set up the recording for today while he also is under the weather. During worship, you are able to share your offerings by placing them in the plate at the entrance to the sanctuary. And bundles of undated envelopes for your Sunday and special offerings are also available. Please see Linda Sandy. Or you can call the office. And pre-authorized withdrawal is also available for having your offerings deposited directly from your financial institution to the church. To sign up, call the office and update forms for those already signed up will be sent out shortly. And thank you again for all your offerings during 2022. Thank you once again to all who donated poinsettias in memory or honor of someone to decorate our sanctuary for Christmas. And whether or not you donated poinsettias, please feel free to take one or more home of the remaining ones after worship. Give them a good home. You can adopt them. You can give them names. You can even bring them back this Christmas if they survive. Let us continue with our gathering song, Word of God Come Down on Earth, number 510. And let us stand as we're able. Mm -hmm.
reading and the prayer of the day. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, our Father, at the baptism of Jesus, you proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Make all who are baptized into Christ faithful to their calling to be your daughters and sons, and empower us all with your Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us be seated and listen to God's word. First reading is from Isaiah chapter 42, verses 1 to 9. God's servant is endowed with God's spirit in order to bring justice to the nations. The servant will not exercise authority, but boisterously or with violence, nor will weariness ever prevent the fulfilling of the servant's task. God's old promises have been fulfilled. The servant's new assignment is to bring light to the nations. Here is my servant whom I, might, whom, whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed, until he has established justice in the earth, and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it, and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes of that that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare, before they spring forth. I tell you of them, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll now sing Spirit of Gentleness, number 396. <laughs>
second reading is Acts chapter 10, verses 34 to 43. Peter crosses the sharp religious boundary separating Jews from Gentiles and proclaims the good news of God's inclusive forgiveness in Jesus' name to Cornelius, a Roman centurion. As a result of Peter's preaching, Cornelius and his family become the first Gentiles to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and his household. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread through Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Amen. And we'll now stand for the gospel affirmation. And this morning we say the gospel acclamation. Hallelujah! A voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Hallelujah! The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Before Jesus begins his ministry, he is baptized by John, touched by the Spirit, and identified publicly as God's child. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you. And do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. On Friday night, I stayed up much too late, watching the 14th ballot for the election of the Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives. Kevin McCarthy ended up being one vote short. Repub Representative Gates seemed to hold all the cards, but wasn't budging from his opposition to his party's leader. McCarthy came over to speak to him, but after a brief animated conversation, turned away in frustration. Another representative had to be physically restrained, a hand put over his mouth as he began to verbally attack Gates. However, then the cameras caught an incredible sight. Gates got up and walked over to McCarthy. The two began to talk. While we weren't able to read their lips, it soon became apparent that their words had broken the stalemate. The 15th ballot took place. McCarthy got elected and I went to bed. <laughs> well, in our reading from Matthew, we see another debate taking place. None of the other Gospels contain this conversation between John and Jesus. John isn't certain about baptizing his cousin. 
Indeed, he doesn't want to do it at all. But Jesus says something that changes his mind. In his argument and in what occurs after the baptism, you and I receive the invitation to enter into relationship with God through Christ as we begin this new year. Many point out that although John doesn't say so directly, his hesitation echoes other parts of the New Testament which tell us that Jesus is without sin. The Gospel of John, <coughs> which doesn't record Jesus' baptism at all, also touches on this. With John seeing Jesus and proclaiming, Behold the Lamb of God. The writer of Matthew, through the baptizer then, appears to want to tell us that Jesus doesn't need a baptism of repentance like the others. Something more is happening. We are to watch and to listen to what happens next. Jesus cryptically counter-argues, let it be so now. For it is proper in this way to fulfill all righteousness. We next hear that John consents. The Greek word behind this action reveals that the baptizer doesn't do so wholeheartedly. He agrees because he is told, rather than because he understands. And perhaps his continuing hesitation is why we don't actually see John baptizing Jesus. Rather, we next see the heavens being opened, the Spirit descending, and a heavenly voice proclaiming delight in the beloved Son. It's done. Jesus' ministry is about to begin. But what exactly did Jesus mean by for it is proper in this way to fulfill all righteousness? In the Bible, being righteous has to do with obedience to God's law. Yet it involves more than being morally or theologically upright. It also connects the person in a continuing relationship with God a trust in the vision and rule of the Creator. To be righteous is much more than being able to check off a list of divine expectations. It is to seek to live however imperfectly with God and with God's people. To be righteous means to live by faith, seeking God's guidance, coming to God in prayer and worship. It is to live in community, caring for the vulnerable, welcoming the stranger, and working to build up the whole, all under God's watchful, loving eye. This wider understanding of righteousness, many believe, is at the heart of Jesus' counter-argument. Rather than debating with John about the necessity of his receiving baptism, he introduces the concept of being baptized to show he seeks to be in relationship both with those who have come for a baptism of repentance and with his heavenly Father. To wade into the waters of the Jordan implies Jesus' acceptance of the ministry set before him as God made flesh. To wade into the waters also unites him with those for whom his good news will offer grace, forgiveness, and reconciliation. A new thing is happening here. In this story, you and I witness much more than a baptism. We receive the invitation to be part of a continuing relationship. From the, this point on, the new righteousness, the new relationship, will begin to take shape. It will seemingly end at defeat in the cross. 
However, the risen son will proclaim once again the good news of a new type of relationship, of new community, of life with God, now and forever. Our first reading from Isaiah, one of the servant songs in that book, for centuries has been connected to Jesus. Its words echo the promise that in Jesus God desires to give us a covenant, a relationship based on light, justice, restoration, and love. In Christ, God seeks to tell us we too are beloved children, that we have a place in God's plan. We receive the call, says Peter in our second reading from Acts, to fear or be in awe of God seeking to do what is right. At the same time, he says, all people, whatever our background, whatever our status, whatever others think of us, can hold on to this promise that we are loved, that we are healed, and that we can live with God in peace. In Christ, we are washed with the promise of a new relationship built on the righteousness of God. As we begin this new year, it is time to wade into the water once again with Jesus, to experience the cleansing God offers, and to rise, knowing we are loved, forgiven, and called God's children. Now, and forever. Amen. For the standards we're able for our hymn of the day, take, O oh, take me as I am, number 814. And it is a one verse song, but we'll sing it through twice. the world in all in need. Last week we remembered the family and friends of two of our members who have recently died, Donna Johnson and Ron Christensen. On Thursday evening our faith community lost yet another member, Teresa Wolofser. Remember her and her family and friends. Funeral arrangements are pending. The funeral for Ron Christensen will be held next Tuesday, January the 17th at 1 o'clock, and we'll be holding it from Hilldale Lutheran Church. And we thank that congregation for opening their doors to that family once more. The Synod of Alberta and the Territories asked us to pray for the people of St. Joseph's Lutheran Church in Hay Lakes, Alberta. On December 31st, fire began by an arsonist began in its building at the front door, and by New Year's Day it was fully destroyed. Calling God, you speak with power to your church. Open our hearts and minds to the new things you are declaring. Strengthen bishops, pastors, deacons, lay leaders, and teachers of the faith. Equip the baptized for your reconciling and redeeming work. Merciful God, receive our prayer. 
Renewing God, you provide the waters of the earth. And in Jesus' baptism, you reveal the waters of life. Cleanse and protect oceans, rivers, and watersheds. Bring relief to parched lands and to communities without access to safe water. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Righteous God, you never weary of establishing justice. Increase cooperation and constructive dialogue between nations. Guide local, national, and international authorities to govern with equity, vision, and integrity. We pray for those in military service, for peacemakers, and for our enemies. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Abiding God, your mercy is steadfast. Give sanctuary to people who flee from oppression, war, poverty, and famine. Strengthen health care workers, caregivers, first responders, counselors, and all who help and heal. <coughs> Comfort those who are grieving or experiencing crisis. This morning our prayers include Micah, Ray, and Eleanor, Elizabeth, Karen, and Glenn. Keith, Matthew, and Jude, Judy, Harvey, and Art, Dory, Fiona, and Eleanor, Audrey, Daniel, and Michael, Karen, Jeannie, and Jerome, Renee, Lawrence, and Larry, Jim, Marita, and Nick, Kathleen, Chris, and Donna May, Mike, Elaine, and Catherine, Susan, Linda, and Sharon, Raylan, Nell, and Taylor, Jeff, Dorothy, and the people of St. Joseph's Congregations and Haylakes. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Caring God, in Christ you gather community. Kindle the gifts of your spirit in the Lutheran Community Cares Pastoral Care Ministry. Inspire its worker, Lisa, and all its volunteers to serve with imagination and wisdom. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Listening God, hear our silent prayers. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Promising God your faithfulness endures throughout all generations. We give thanks for those who have died in Christ, including Donna, Ron, and Teresa, praying for their families and friends while trusting that we will be united with them and all the saints in Christ's resurrection life. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We bring to you our needs and hopes, O God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. And for gifts received and shared, we pray. Liberating God, you break the bonds of injustice and let the oppressed go free. Receive these offerings and thanksgiving for all your works of merciful power and shape us as people of your justice and freedom. You we magnify and adore, through Jesus our Savior. Amen. Receive now the blessing. The God who faithfully brings forth justice and breaks the oppressor's rod, bless, strengthen, and uphold you today and always. Amen. Our sending song, the fifty song, Songs of Thankfulness and Praise, number 310.